go. There you go. When you dual stream, you kind of split your I just your turned audience. OBS. I, I wasn't streaming on OBS, but I just turned OBS off, and now the camera is coming back up. I, I guess it's a whole separate thing with that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, OBS has that because you could use your, like, your green screen through OBS, right? Um, and so yeah. OBS, if you if you go in your settings, there's there's something for it to export to like programs like Discord, etc. While you are young. So before we get started, okay? Um, I want like my chat. I don't fucking know anything about this, but a lot of people seem to know who you are and I don't really know who you are dislike you and have like some allegations. Um, I don't want to just ride onto a debate with that hanging in the air. And I want to say that I take no side because I don't know anything. So I want to give you like at least like 30, 60 seconds to like address that to whatever the audience is. And then we're going to move on. And then in chat, meme all you fucking want. I don't give a fuck if you talk shit the entire time, but he deserves the right to be able to address any allegations if I don't fucking know anything about it. The reason these Chris Nats are espousing these, you know, uh, oh, he's a fucking genocidal warlord pedophile. It's because they don't want to debate me. I legitimately think that they cannot defend their epistemology, their religion, their worldviews in front of me, so they have to make up a character assassination to avoid me. Um, basically, what happened is I got into a spat on Twitter with one of my uh, friends on Twitter. I, I just followed her, and we just, you know, talk occasionally. And, uh, a Catholic, a really puritanical, you know, a Chris Nat Catholic by the name of Cute Brute, um, started some shit with her. And, you know, we just got into our entire spat, and there's definitely context missing in BPF's allegations. So, it's an entire rabbit hole in and of itself. Uh, and I'll make this expose so the Christnats can no longer, you know, use that as propaganda against me. But I think our discussion was justified. Um, I mean, it got raunchy, you know, here or there, but I don't necessarily see what's so immoral about what i did or All said right. fair enough you know those are his words stay tuned to his channel and uh and he'll address the allegations in, in further on his channel and i would like to also point out that um you know terrible 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 defense of yourself sir like maybe your video does great but starting off with like see the reason these krishnats are against me <laughs> it's like fucking terrible way it's to do that everybody but me. Uh, you know like, it's, you it's know almost, i'm just saying i'm just saying that was that was rough uh you know it is what it is but uh let us continue so you I don't remember we were i i talk shit on twitter right like i just meme and fucking talk shit on twitter i don't really give a fuck about okay. twitter um, so I, I don't know what I said or whatever, but like you DM me and you were like, dude, I want to debate you. And the proposition, as far as I know, it is that capitalism is exploitative. Um, I didn't oh, know who coercive, you were. Uh, coercive. I might've gotten the semantics wrong. A little coercive. Bit coercive yes. changes a lot. Um, but we can get into the nitty gritty of coercive. Um, because you know, what does coercive mean? Is nature coercive, et cetera. And then at a certain point you'd prove your position, but. You know, well, we'll get into it. You you could you could easily prove that, but you don't. But by saying everything is, but regardless, um, so that that's kind of what happened. Now people are like, "Oh, this guy's an idiot. Don't debate him." Whatever. I looked at one video of yours, right? You were debunking uh, a debunk, which is already like you know peak content, right? Someone does something, then someone debunks it, then someone debunks the debunk, and you're like, ah, cringe. Right, yeah. it's cringe, it, the, the cringe there, but I was like, whatever, I'll check it out. And um, and in it, you know, what I saw was you, um, I mean, you didn't give a good definition of labor theory of value because you didn't like explain the differences between like Das Kapital 1 and Das Kapital yeah. 3 and like marginal revolution, et cetera, et cetera. But you mentioned marginal utility. You clearly had a grasp of labor theory of value, at least in some respect. Um, you clearly had a grasp of the economic arguments that they were making. And you clearly were able to identify that the attacks that they were making were trash attacks, um, some of which because they're just kind of like moralistic callings to the pro-capitalist side, and some of which because it's just it's just talking about surplus value from a Marxist perspective and not, are, are you not labor to, theory of value. Are you referring to the Smithians video or Ubersoy's video? Because I think my, it was like it was like 10 or 11 days ago. Uh Whichever one that yeah. was, like I just I looked for the first one that wasn't like like hanging out on stream and was like a, a like a 
a video essay. Yeah, uh, a Theron could have made some, you know, a much Theron, better. Theron, I think that's what it was. Later. Yeah, yeah. And what he did was essentially appeal to, you know, the capitalist justification for, you know, uh, substituting their labor instead of, you know, what has to do with prices. And that is the essence of the labor theory of value. Uh, I, I just found his critiques to be irrelevant and, you know, yeah, not so substitute. I was like, I saw that and I was like, yeah, this guy seems like, you know, we could have a we could have a, a, a debate or a conversation about this. So you take umbrage with the fact that I am staunchly capitalist um that i am essentially the most capitalist the capitalist can possibly be by being an anarcho-capitalist um and so i want to hear why you think i'm wrong because this isn't there's no moderator right so this is obviously going to be a little bit more free form but i want to hear what it is that you think is is wrong about my position um and if you can sprinkle in there how you're not a communist throughout this um, you know, then maybe, maybe we can figure something out because I don't see the difference, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, like, give me, give me your argument. Um, well, do you want me to touch first on why I believe I want you to make the strongest argument possible? Why my system is better. Why when, I think my well, system is better. Well, you're, you're coming to me with the proposition, right? Yeah. So if you want to yeah. get into like a comparison of systems at a later point, that's fine. But. The first thing is, is you're saying capitalism is coercive, right? And so what I want from you is that argument. And obviously in that argument, I want to understand what your definitions are for capitalism and what your definition is for coercion um, so that we can, we, can, we can pick apart whether or not I agree or disagree with your position. And also, uh, you know, if I disagree, like tell you why I think you're wrong. Yeah, so I believe to be capitalism uh, to be an economic system involving obviously capital investment and private ownership of the means of production wage labor and generally the profit motive uh, we can you know really get into the nitty of gritty of this but in essence it's ownership of the means of production to reproduce profits every quarter it may maybe it's in the form of a dividend or a buyback whatever that firm uses um, I believe the CCP to be state capitalist, but I don't believe them to be socialist, as I truly think the delineation between socialism and capitalism is when the workers are making all uh, private property subservient to their interests, rather, and providing for their needs. In terms of coercion, I, in pretty much every circumstance, find that as an extenuating factor that would otherwise make a choice free. Obviously, that can apply to many things, and I'll, I'll explain um, how I do believe some coercion is justified to some extent. So where would okay. you like to go with this? So like, I don't like your definition of capitalism, right? Because your definition of capitalism, I think lacks any utility. <clears throat> um, because the only system, so under your definition of capitalism, basically every communist regime would be capitalist. Every liberal democracy would be capitalist. Um, the only places that wouldn't be capitalists, right, would be anarchists, some some small relative anarchist communes um, and like extreme, um, extreme control of the entire market economy, such as like North Korea. Even under your definition, Stalinism would be like a form of of capitalism other than the name of like saying the private property doesn't exist. Because... I really don't feel any society has truly represented the interests of the workers. Um, social capitalist, e even liberal societies. Um, this is mostly because they use nomenclatura systems, and it's just a new way. Well, it's speaking to Eastern Bloc communism specifically, it's just a new way, I believe, for ruling classes to disguise their interests um okay but but again okay. again that doesn't address the issue with you saying that capitalism is essentially a market economy that doesn't that isn't 100 percent state controlled right that you make no delineation between fascism um the ccp america iceland etc if all of these things are capitalist right um yes. and that's your definition of capitalism then like 
I would say more often than not, by your definition of capitalism, capitalism is coercive because you just included throughout history, right? Like essentially every market economy since the industrial revolution with incredibly low, with relatively few exceptions. And what this does is what, what this does is this frames the conversation, right? Where we get into an empiricist debate which I don't want to do because I think empiricism is, I'm an Austrian, right? So I, I'm going to think it's stupid anyways. Um, but we'll get into it in empiricist debate. You'll bring up this and then I'll be like, here's why that's not capitalism. Here's why that's not capitalism. Here's why that's not capitalism. And then eventually we get to some example that you have knowledge of that I don't have knowledge of. And then you're like, look, I got the dunk on him here. When really what it is the problem is that you just, you have a poor definition. In, at least in my approximation. So let me give you my definition of capitalism, right? And see if and see if that if that like shores up something or if we can come somewhere in between. So what I would say is that capitalism is the ownership of private goods, the ownership of which is determined by homesteading and voluntary transactions, where the distribution of commodities, price, and production. So in production, I would include labor, land, and time right? As elements of production um, are determined by a competitive free market. Now, that well, to me is okay. capitalism, right? Everything other than that to me is some state intervention that is, that is capitalistic, right? That it, that it, that it's, it's close to capitalism. It has some tendencies of capitalism, but it's not actually capitalism because it's a mixed, it's a, it's a mixed economy. I'd go as far to say, um, not every transaction is voluntary. As a matter of fact, maybe I think you could make the argument all transactions aren't voluntary. Uh, for instance, <laughs> this is especially, yeah, well, yes, this is especially patented. No, patent, not patented. That's a different process. In circumstances which involve labor, obviously, you're not going to just rot here and starve. Uh, you've actually got to go out somewhere into the world and work or, you know, work. Yeah. That's the work. human condition of the human species. But right? is it not is, coercive? Okay. If that's coercive, everything is coercive. Nature is coercive. Humans are coercive. Um, all economic systems are going to be inherently coercive. Um, like the, if, if, if your definition of coercion is that there are that there's scarcity, right, in resources and that we don't live in a post-scarcity world, then everything is coercive and your your definition is meaningless. I think coercion is justified to adequately accommodate for human need. Um, okay. Well, then define coercion. Define, well, as I stated previously, an extenuating factor that makes it to where choice would be free otherwise. I mean... Uh, so obviously. you would say that uh, a tsunami is coercion. A hurricane in, is coercion. In, What's in an coercion. extenuating factor that takes away individuals' ability to be free because they have to flee their home because a hurricane's coming, right? So you're saying that nature, the for like rain, fire, lightning, uh, earthquakes is a form of coercion, and a, and a, and and that the earthquake is actually anti-liberty. Like you you see how the, your your definition doesn't make any fucking sense. No, no, no. anti liberty that is a process of nature. Well, I mean, humans are a form of nature. Like, everything is natural. And that's another reason why I'm opposed to fossil fuels, uh, you know, like fracking and all this. Because it... it yeah, but all that's irrelevant. All of that's irrelevant to the question I asked, which is that, like, if your definition of coercion is one such as we live in a world with scarce resources... And there are there are environmental pressures, be they from nature, be they from other humans, et cetera. And that any environmental pressure that causes a human to act differently is a form of coercion. Then the word coercion is just a word that describes the human condition and is meaningless to say capitalism is bad because it's coercive. Because what you're saying is capitalism is the natural state of human beings. And I would say that that is a naturalistic fallacy in favor of capitalism, and you're actually arguing for capitalism by the definition of your own word. So are you pro-capitalist? No, no, no. I think coercion can apply to virtually everything. But what uh, a socialist and or communist system specifically entails is allocation of commodities based on human need and even more left-wing 
elements of this system, including mine, have subsistence labor abolished. I mean, you believe in the non-aggression principle, right? Well, okay, I think here's yes. a much better line of inquiry. Like, obviously, I agree with you in that coercion can apply to a multitude of various circumstances. No, 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 I'm talking so, about your, I'm talking about your definition. I think coercion, no, I, I think coercion requ requires personhood and will. I think in order to coerce someone, right, that w when you use the word colloquially is coercion, you cannot be talking about natural phenomena or environmental pressures, right? What you have to be talking about is aggression towards another individual, that you're attempting to well, modify, they're threatened one, to modify their behavior, right? You're One, we, we do drastically affect the, affect the environment with what we do, and two, personhood is involved. That's not a, labor. that's not a, I mean, that's, that's not a, that's necessary for labor. That's not a, an argument against what I said, though. Like, what I'm saying is that I think coercion requires personhood and that that personhood enacts its will to aggress upon another person via threats to attempt to change their behavior, essentially making you're, the transaction non-voluntary. No, I'm not. Explain to me how uh, I'm yes, describing you labor. Okay. Yes. You are aggressing upon a person. Well, not aggress, but coercion because it's an extenuating factor that does not make the choice voluntary i mean no now you're going back to your definition that we already realize has no utility like so if i'm describing well, I it, if exactly i'm cool. describing something and i'm prefacing it with my definition then what you're doing is you're straw manning me by supplanting your own definition again as part of your argument so make the argument from my definition as to why i'm describing labor well your argument is basically Contingent upon apathy, I do believe it's some form of aggression to just let people starve. Let me ask you this simple question: How's that? Do you believe apathy? Do you believe apathy is immoral? I mean, it depends upon the circumstance. What you mean by that? But but from a libertarian natural law perspective, there's nothing illegal about apathy. <laughs> How is apathy or inaction, also as the Catholics would define passive action, right, a form of aggression? Explain to me how an individual, right? Because what you're saying is an individual must act. If they do not act, this is a form of aggression against another person. But see, the problem is, is where does the must act come from? The must act means that there is an impetus, either some enforcement mechanism, right? Of some sort, where an individual attempts to coerce that individual into the supposed responsibility of action. So your definition of morality requires a violation first of the non-aggression principle. And I would say it just falls flat on its face there. Inaction and passive action are not forms of aggression. I don't think the non-aggression principle adequately, adequately describes what you need to do to be well then you don't get to change the definition of something to say okay. that to say that something is a violation of a definition that you then change like that's just subverting the definition to to meet your own argument which is just simply not how that works right like you're gonna have to stick with the you can't use a word and then as you're trying to explain why i'm wrong about the word change the definition of the word from your kind of marxian lens right like that's not how that works i'm gonna nail you to the wall to stick to your definitions but you can make an argument if if you would like okay. about like why you think passive action or inaction or or the feeling that an individual has in their mind is ap as apathy not caring for the plight or suffering of others is mm -hmm. in effect aggression which is force and violence or threats of force and violence against another other person to stop their freedom because it's making them beholden to your will. So say how uh, we live in Monopoly. How is apathy Monopoly. forcing someone to be beholden to your will? You're literally describing an individual that has no will I, I in the situation to, to begin it. with. I was about to describe it. Okay. So I'll let you go. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. I get, I, mean, I, get, I get mad at fucking commies, dog. But I'll be quiet. I'll behave. Okay. So let's say I own everything. I've suddenly become a capitalist. Oh, you've converted me, man. But we live in a Monopoly in which I owe everything. So you own now, the world? Mm -hmm. How the hell did you do that? Effectively. I, I don't fucking I, I just, know. I just, I, well, I'm just not going to... I don't engage in hypotheticals that don't match reality. I'm a good entrepreneur. I'm a good no, entrepreneur. No, it just doesn't match reality, right? Like like an individual that owns all of the property in the entire world is essentially an impossibility. So I don't feel the need to engage in, uh, uh, no, in an it, analogy it, it, that doesn't match setup. reality. 
the setup to test the non-aggression principle, sir. Exactly, so, which means it needs to maintain the principle elements of the world in which we live in in I'm order for it to explain, be accurate. I'm going to explain why apathy can sometimes be aggression. Okay, so let's say I can pretty much automate, you know, all pretty much everything I want to. But I'm obviously willing to hire some people. Now, them being jobless means they just starve, okay? But my ownership of that property makes them beholden to me because they rely on me for subsistence, do they not? I mean... I mean, in the analogy that I refuse to negotiate with in which you own the entirety of the world, I told you, okay. it doesn't well, match well, reality. Well, let's, like, let's, in okay, reality, yeah, okay. right? Like, in, in reality, you have an evenly rotating economy. Like, like, like even at best case scenario, you have an evenly rotating economy. In a worst case scenario, right? Where the prices in competition are perfect and, like, you know, price is only price is only inflationary, right? Like there's no profit that that exists in an evenly rotating okay. economy. So that's so your utopia, scrap the right? Monopoly example. Right. Let's just scrap the monopoly. Yeah. All example. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's apply it to modern day. I mean, there's nothing more realer than, you know, modern day because this is the world we live in. So obviously people are beholden to capitalists, to businesses, to provide them subsistence and to keep them living alive. Like, so you have to give, on average, because this is for most workers, a third of your life you have to spend mm -hmm. working, you know, retire, and just to maintain yourself day by day. Like I generally do that, view that as a form of aggression, whereas my s system proposes, okay, well, we've How? just done away with... You, you, your, your example was to prove that it's a form of aggression. Then you said that capitalists exist, people need to eat... Therefore, people work to eat, right? And and yeah. and that and and because of that, that's a form of aggression. But you haven't explained how it's a form of aggression. You've just stealing you've my just, life is what I'm saying. What have I stolen? My time. I. How have I stolen it? The autonomy. In what way have I stolen it? As the capitalist, right? I'm entirely beholden to you, for subsistence for living. As my no, you're not. Places subsistence. No, you're not. Name a place right now where you're beholden hey, to a single general, capitalist. I'm, behol I'm beholden to markets. <laughs> so now you're beholden to the existence of humanity existing in a market economy. Okay. You want to that's what you're saying? The market economy. Yes, that's what socialists want to do. Right. Okay. So, so, so again, I don't I, I, automatically, I would just say positive rights don't exist. And this is a silly argument um, because that would require you to enslave other people. Uh, I'm a man-made law theorist generally well I'm, I'm believe in natural law and law that we can justify objectively unlike laws that we kind of just like come up with out of our ass out of a consequentialist analysis yeah objectively you cannot argue against the non-aggression principle without a without running into the law of non-contradiction so it's it's false to argue against uh private property and it's false to argue against um uh, hey, self-ownership aggression labor under a market system is aggression Right, but you keep making the claim system. without without. So what it, what are you defining as aggression? Because aggression, um, aggression, in, in as far as the so non-aggression, that word with theft, theft. You know, theft of my bodily autonomy, my time. Okay, so now we're changing it to theft. Okay, now, but that doesn't change anything. You're just attempting to use a synonym, right? So, but you're still talking about the non-aggression principle, but you want to use theft. Okay, so what is theft? What 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 does it mean to steal something? Involuntary removal of something somebody would rather have. Okay, so involuntary removal of something someone would rather have. Okay, so now what you've done is in your definition, you've abolished the right of private property, right? Because That's now, so and now what you've said is that every time there is conflict over um, scarce resources, anytime someone loses that conflict, regardless of how it's lost, right? That is a form of theft. So two people want to drink this energy drink, right? And I say, no, this is mine. I was here first. Well, now what this is, is this is involuntary removal of something that someone else would rather have. You're now saying that I'm stealing something by drinking my own thing. Oh, so now theft only involves time. It doesn't involve property. 
Doesn't involve resources. No, what I was saying, what I was saying is labor is mm -hmm. theft of bodily autonomy and time. My system does away with subsistence. And so you course, don't, yes, it's you don't believe that you own your labor? Mankind. You need to perform labor. Obviously, so I own do you labor. own your body? You own labor. You own the right, the, the, the right to do with your labor as you will. To do with your body you as you right will. to not work. Obviously, like, I own my labor, but I don't have the right to not work. <laughs> well, th those two are contradictory. You can't argue both of those at the same time. Absolutely. It's a contradiction. How can you own your right to labor and then say that you don't have the right to not be enslaved in labor to someone else and then say that voluntary you transactions that I have, that, 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 that I advocate for, are actually the form of slavery? You just justified slavery and then uh, uh, in your I attempt to not know. justify voluntary interactions. You're a slaver. Oh, my God, dude. No. Okay. So slavery is involuntary ownership of another human being. Labor is the involuntary theft of a human being's time and bodily autonomy. Um, so, so, so hold on. If labor is, if labor is in it of itself, right? Um, hmm. That, right? And we're going to use, I fucking, this is why I hate Marxists because they fucking change words all the time. So what would be the, what would be the other work? Would you supplant the other work with the term work and say that labor and work are two different things and that the distinction of labor is the theft supposedly, or the aggression supposedly of positive rights and that work isn't labor. And then explain to me why that distinction is important. Colloquially, labor refers to hard, arduous work, but for the sake of this conversation, I just keep them synonymous. Okay, so if labor and work are the same thing, right, and an individual has a right to their own body and can freely do with their body what it is they do, they can engage in the abstract concept of labor voluntarily, and they can choose to do this for a sum of money and or benefits or barter. So how is that... An act of I'd aggression. Starve otherwise. Starve otherwise. Because, right, but we're going like, all the way to back work. to your idea of coercion, I, right? I'm forced to work. Okay, so so. Been in Ankapistan uh, because you know. You're forced to. Win. You already said you're forced to work in your system as well because you said you don't oh, believe no, no, that no, no, you no, no, don't no, no, have no, the right no, to no, not no. work. No, no, I said. As an end goal, subsistence is abolished and we've met all needs. All that shit is automated. So in my system, we can just pursue our own interests. And if that's- That's like, a post-scarcity world. On... Yes, I want to get to a post-scarcity world. In Ankapistan- well, If you're in a you're post-scarcity system... world, the entire conversation changes because we don't live in a post-scarcity world. Post-scarcity world is a utopic fantasy. So it's Ankapistan, and that's what I'm trying to prove. So- so your argument of, to me saying something Labor. is a utopic fantasy is let me prove why I'm right by engaging in the utopic fantasy. I don't think mine is a utopic fantasy. I never claim I never claim any utopic dreams in anything. All I do is claim nobody, philosophical nobody. answers about what is and isn't aggression and what we should do um, in terms of common law and natural yeah. law philosophy. Okay. That's not a utopic me, vision. Okay, me needing to work for a living makes me pretty much entirely beholden to you for a really good chunk of my life. I mean, is that a succinct explanation? No, because it's not true. Because you don't need to work for me. You have a labor market. You can work for a bunch of other people. You could become Fine. an okay. entrepreneur. You, you could get a No, not you. You could get a loan. Right, no, but you could literally go like capital, right? Capital and commodities. Like one man's capital is another man's commodity, right? Like they switch labor. places. Right. So, but no, but what I'm saying is like when you say you need to do this, you could literally have an idea right now. Sit down with a fucking pen and notepad, your personal property, if you will. Right. Since we don't like private property, you could go to the fucking bank and say, I have this great fucking idea. Right. And then they go, well, you don't have good enough credit. You can raise your credit score. You can do some things. You can become an entrepreneur. You can become the capitalist and you can hire other people. I mean, the idea that you yeah, are I, beholden to the capitalist class, even, right? Even is, no, is absurd, even, even in our specific. own coercive system. Well, let's say I'm, you know, I have too big of an ego to work for mm -hmm. anybody else. Even if I'm becoming my own boss, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm still mm -hmm. forced to work, you know, to generate interest on that loan. Am I not? I mean, it depends on what you mean by forced to work. 
if you don't pay things that you voluntarily said you would pay, then you have to do it. I mean, like we have we have like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like you need food. How do you get food? Well, working is one way to get food. It's not the only way to get food, right? But it is one way to get food. That's yeah. I'm just saying it's aggression because your system and Kapistan makes me beholden to either a banker if I'm an entrepreneur or a boss if I'm working for somebody else. Okay, so your what is your definition of aggression now, um, as opposed to the libertarian definition of aggression? Because the definition of theft, we already proved that you gave, you said, well, let's change the theft. And then I already proved that your definition of theft is meaningless. Um, but so like, let's, let's try again and let's get a definition of theft or aggression, right? So I can understand what it is that you're saying, because what you're saying is unequivocally false, unless you have a different definition of aggression. So I want to like lay out your argument because I've yet to really hear how you, you just keep positing it is, and then saying that like natural needs of the human exists and you you keep making claims on top of claims without making an argument as to why it's aggression okay so i'm defining aggression as basically force um, pretty much an extenuating factor that would make the choice free otherwise the extenuating factor in and capistan being me starving which makes me beholden to you who says you start you see how i you see how i view this as coercive right I'm asking you for your definition, right? And I gave it to you just now. No, you're just saying that you're just saying that if what first of all, you're making a false claim, which is that charity doesn't exist, family networks don't exist. You're making the claim that if one does not work, one will starve. I That's not even doesn't exist. Because you're saying that one must starve, right? This is basic deductive reasoning, right? A general principle down to a specific example, right? Inductive reasoning, right? Specific example to the general principle. If we use basic uh, rules of logic by what you're saying, you're saying that charity cannot exist. You're saying that family members can't feed other oh, well, family yeah. members, right? Because you're because saying one must exist. starve if they don't work, and yet NEATS exists now, right? Like... They exist on a commercial basis, so they're beholden to the same system. What does that even mean? Okay. They have to generate revenue so they can sustain themselves as a charitable entity. And this relies on labor. So, okay. well, yeah, all, actually, all, like, in the all product of charity, we're substituting somebody else's labor for... <laughs> Labor is only one part of the equation. That's your problem here, right? Like all well, commodities, I, I, all goods yeah. and services require land, time, and, and labor, right? There's three There's three major pieces of the equation. You're only talking what about I'm labor. Saying, even in Ancapistan, mm -hmm. it's still coercive. Like labor is why, pivotally why, Ancapistan is, you know, Dude, coercive. Do you, do you realize you're just going in circles and you refuse to answer the question? How is it, right, that someone voluntarily chooses to work with another person to sell their labor it's not right? voluntary coercion how is it not voluntary explain that then because there's an extenuating factor that would make the choice free otherwise that being so can you name starving. can you name i don't want okay. to start now do i okay so so by by virtue of your definition we'll attack it from a different angle because i've already defeated your definition from one angle so let me defeat it from another angle right let me just show how it's flawed like every way that you look at it Name an interaction then that is purely voluntary and tell me well, why obviously. that logic applies in a way that this logic doesn't. Pretty much every action we do is involuntary. Like, can you want to ah, want something? No. Yeah. So now every action we do is involuntary. Every action is inherently aggressive. And now we can choose oh. to do whatever acts of aggression or violence, coercion, or redistributive wealth or theft that we want because it's all justified because all actions are. Do you see how you're muddying the water? There's coercion to, that does more harm than other coercion. So in my right, ideal system, Right, now you get to do a consequentialist mm -hmm. analysis based off of your subjective values mm -hmm. of evil. And maximize positive freedom. You maximize negative freedom. Now, in Ancapistan, people can do pretty much what No, I don't believe in positive it. freedom, period. There's no such thing as positive freedom because it's a contradiction. Positive freedom requires the uh, uh, taking away of freedom of others. Negative rights do not require um, taking away other people's rights. Therefore, only well, negative rights are true. 
Yeah, let's talk both our end goals. So in my system, I've done away with subsistence and people can focus on whatever the fuck they want. Maybe this is the arts. Uh, I don't know, some shit like that. But in your system, people are forced to spend the majority of their time working. I mean, obviously, maybe some people have some paid time off. Again, that's the maximization of negative freedom. Oh, wait, you don't believe in that. But right. Negative rights are the only rights that exist. How can a right exist that requires the violation of other rights? Negative rights do not require the violation of other rights. Positive rights require the violation of other rights. If they require the violation of other rights, then they're not rights. They're inconsistent. They're illogical. You cannot, you cannot so justify positive say rights. Again. Name a positive right. Name and positive. I mean, I'll repeat, but then I'll, 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 I'll explain it and maybe it'll be easier through example. But what I'm saying is that only true. negative rights can exist because in order to maintain negative rights, you do not need to violate the rights of other people. In order to maintain positive rights, okay, it requires the violation the vi of her rights. So, <laughs> right. okay. But you don't justify anything. You just say things uh, are. No, no, no. no. Nope. My system, we get to choose what we want to do with our lives. Your system, we get to choose where we work. No, <laughs> you don't. As much... Under your system, we don't get to choose if we work as an Does your system have taxation? We're talking about... Uh, What's and your system, right? As an end goal. And so anarcho-communism, uh, right? Yeah, Private property take, doesn't exist. So it requires coercion. <laughs> But you say it's okay because so everything's coercive, right? And you say everyone gets to choose what they I'm want to do. Positive freedom. <laughs> but you're not maximizing choice. I absolutely am. Positive freedom. You're inherently taking away people's choice, and it's unjustifiable. I view it as justifiable because we're abolishing subsistence. Do you get this? Because right, I get, we I get it, but you can view it as justifiable, but it's not. It's just logically we focus on what a contradiction. We do in Ancomistan, okay? Yeah, I mean, like, look, if if an anarcho-communist commune wants to live next to Ancapistan, right, and they have a single property owner, right, and in that single property owner buys that piece of land or obtains that piece of land, however they get, they homestead that land, right? They go out and do that land, and they draft up a contract, right, and everyone that comes there must sign this contract that says these are the rules on this private property. We're gonna set up this council of elders to handle disputes. Um, you know, we're going to the, the the private property owner will be, you know, an individual that is set on the council of elders every so often, et cetera. And we're going to we're going to we're going to share all of the resources and all of the things you want to set that up in a way that's logically consistent and voluntary. Be my guest. I, I, I'm all for it. Right. But if you want to argue that capitalism is coercion based right. off of a definition that everything is coercion and you want to argue for silly but things I'm like positive rights, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. There's a level of coercion involved in everything. But in Ancomistan, we get to choose what we do with our lives. In Ancapistan, we do not. Because most people, newsflash, would rather not be working now, would they? Right. What you're saying is scarcity exists, therefore this justifies whatever system I want. Precisely, like taxation and a stronger social safety net, yes. <laughs> right, that's absurd, right? To say that because scarcity exists, that we can do any morally unjustifiable thing and people no longer have a right to self-ownership is a logical contradiction that you can't, that, that, that is false by logic. We don't even need to look at the evidence. Self-ownership, if I'm devoting a third of my life to a capitalist, that's clearly not self-ownership. Obviously, like I own the labor, but I mean, do I own the time spent? Do I own, you know, well, again, I'll return to my it's definition of voluntary association. I'll return to my definition of capitalism, right? The ownership of private goods, the ownership of which is determined by homesteading and voluntary transactions, where the distribution of commodities, price and production are determined by a competitive free market. So in a system that is capitalist, all of your interactions are voluntary unless you are aggressed upon. And then we need, though that person needs to pay restitution for their aggression to no longer be branded a criminal. So you really selling your labor is not right coercive. Now. Okay. So if I put a gun to your head and, you know, force you to work, there's an extenuating factor there that makes it where in no, nobody would even think to consider 
that voluntary. The factor that we're introducing in Ancapistan is that I'm gonna starve if I don't work. Do you really consider that a voluntary transaction? Well, first, a couple things. Number one, you put a gun in my head, I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. Number two, you are saying you're you're making a distinction without a difference because your claim is that the capitalist system is coercive because it requires people to work in order to feed themselves. And yet at the same time, you are also claiming that that coercion is inherent in all of these interactions and that people under your system do not have a right not to work, I'm which is a right that you do have under system. capitalism. So therefore, by defi even your own defi no, by your own definitions, oh, yeah. oh, by your wow. own words and your own logic, capitalism is less coercive than anarcho-communism, and so you've failed by your own definitions. No, the reason that that's false is because, as I've been saying this entire debate, labor is theft, bro. Labor is theft. Labor is an so abstract concept that abstract represents the sale, the transaction that you that you do, that you do right, that you, you do right, in exchange for in exchange to the universal time preference, right? Like you prefer goods now. The capitalist has the money and the investments to, and, and and has low time preference, so they put in capital so that the same goods can be produced later, and they are paid based off of their interest. Right, which is the the money that they put into towards time because there's a preference for things now as opposed to later, and there is also a think, preference a um, towards of market how, allocation of like, resources. Oh they are rewarded Dark. or they are punished oh. for the way that they oh allocate God. resources. Right, so the capitalist right. and the and the laborer are engaged in a voluntary transaction. There's no coercion yeah. here. There absolutely is because, like, okay. dude, your your Maybe camera went pretty wild for a second, like static or internet or something. Your audio seems fine though, so you, I just want to let you know. Oh, um, okay, you seem fine on my end. Anyway, Discord so, gets wonky sometimes. I just wanted to let you know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. The reason I view labor as theft is because it's not exactly a voluntary association. There's an extenuating factor there, is there not? The extenuating factor is of the human condition. Ronald as you Reagan. Ronald Reagan. You say that this applies to any and all transactions, period. If it involves in essentially all transactions, right, then it is a constant Ronald in our Reagan. world. Ronald Reagan. It's a constant, it's a constant in our world. So if it is a constant in our world, so long as we have scarcity, right, then there are only two options. We do something that leads to post-scarcity, which would obviously be capitalism, not communism, because the innovation under capitalism is, is incentivized. Uh, I um, so the incentivization got is towards innovation in capitalism, as opposed to against it um, in a communist system, or like we, we hit a magic button or AGI or something. But, okay. but if it's a constant in our world, it doesn't matter. Okay, the idea that there's innovation in a capitalist system just gets destroyed by the Phoebus cartel. But what I want to explain to you. The idea that there's innovation in a, you, so you have your anecdote and that destroys the idea that innovation exists in capitalism. Please, yeah, it, please, t but you were about to pivot away from that as if you were going to get some secret dunk. And that's the dumbest shit I've ever because heard. Because I want to, because I, I want to explain to you the philosophical concept why labor even as it exists under our current neoliberal framework is you know still very coercive there's yeah there's there's certainly coercion there's certainly coercion like um the national but labor review board that forces unions system. on companies for example that's an that's an element of coercion against the capitalists that the state does that is you know immoral for example um yeah there's elements of coercion in our system like an american economy but an american economy is capitalistic not capitalism Okay, in my post-scarcity world, and you can call it a utopia if you want. Well, I, I, no, I just don't feel like engaging in a post-scarcity world. We don't live in one, and we don't have any evidence that we're going to live in one anytime soon. We don't have any evidence we're going to live in Ancapistan anytime soon. So for the sake of intellectual honesty, I'm going to grant your 
end game premise. That's, that's and no, that's like a, that's a false movies. dichotomy because one is presenting right. the way one is presenting a theoretical system to engage in the reality that we live in now, and the other one, your position, is specifically engaging in a reality in something that is a non-reality or is a potential reality that we're unaware of if we'll ever be able to achieve. So no, that's not the same we'll thing. Ever be able to achieve in Kapistan, okay? So for the sake of intellectual right. honesty, again, you're lying. You're no, you're lying because and Kapistan is a theory about how we should deal with the reality we live in now, right? You're positing a non reality. These are two different things. Okay. Is a choice free if you could have done otherwise? Is a choice free if you could have done otherwise? Yeah. I don't understand no, the question. Could you I be more specific? Okay. So, in my system, I guess you don't want to compete with that, but just a bear with No, I have a problem with competing seconds. with your system, just not your system placed in the utopia, right? Like, like fucking, like, engage with the system as it, as it is in the reality that we have today. Like, grounded in the world we live in, not in a world but that doesn't Kapistan exist. Has never, according to you, types, have, has never manifested itself in a reality. So, what I'd uh, like to say... I don't know how many times you're going to circle around this dumbass fucking point. I don't know if you're just stupid, or if you're trying no, you're not, to, like... Not, or if you're trying you're to get clips. To with my world. No, I'm not, I'm not willing to engage in a post-scarcity world as a means of explaining economic principles and philosophical axioms of what is and isn't justified in the reality of the world we live in, which is a world that has scarcity. Like, don't fucking try and bullshit some clips so that you can make a six-minute fucking I'm, video I'm where you edit together this. and be like, look how I dunked on him. You know, like, it's dumb. Like, be, like, engage I, with I reality. Earlier, I turned OBS off. Okay, so... I'm forced to work. I starve otherwise. Do you really think that isn't coercive? Yes or no? Well, if you're forced to work, that's coercive. If you're enslaved and you starve, work. then I'm, yeah, I'm, that's coercion. Okay, I'm forced to work because I would starve otherwise. You got that. Right? Under what's? I don't know what system that entails. That's not a system that exi that doesn't exist in Ancapistan or an American economy as it is today. There are plenty of people okay. who don't work so that beg saying, for food. There are charities saying, that exist. There are people that live off of their parents. There are people on social okay. security, for example, um, despite them never having put money into social security. Fine. Okay. So ch charity. Welfare queens, right? Like, what are you yeah, talking about? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, let's talk about specifically in Kapistan. Charity pays for my life. Charities, even in Ancapistan, has have to operate on a commercial basis. So obviously they're substituting somebody else's labor for mine. I mean, if some really generous rich guy wants to, you know, lazy people to just smoke weed all day, that's all fine. But somebody has to substitute for somebody's labor. But that okay, doesn't happen so, in the post scarcity so, world. So it's first just of all, a better world, mind you. First of all, you keep saying and Kapistan, right? And and Kapistan. And it's it's totally fine if you haven't like dealt with a lot of ANCAPs, right? Like that's that's a meme. It's not Very really true. what an anarcho-capitalism is, right? Anarcho-capitalism is a legal, descriptive legal philosophy and ethical philosophy of what is and isn't of what isn't justifiable, right? But it's not necessarily like like ANCAPistan could be a covenant community that ANCAPistan could be an anarcho-communist community. Um and like you can you could be an ANCOM so long as you did so completely voluntarily and like signed a contract to live in said commune, right? So like when you say in ANCAPistan, you're also talking about your system, right? Yeah. No, because I'm not an ANCAP. What I'm saying no, is well, that what I I'm truly do believe no, some no, 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 I'm going to hammer you on this. To get well, You're allowed to live in an anarcho-communist commune voluntarily, right? By so long as you have the contracts and so long as children that come of age have the choice to live there or not live there and you don't kidnap people. You're allowed to be in an anarcho-communist commune under Ancapistan. I think, I think the whole world should be Ancom. Technically, I really call myself a Demsoc, but I've only developed Ancom leanings recently. It's just that I believe. <laughs> okay. I believe instances of coercion are justified to provide for our fellow human beings. And in a post-scarcity world, I think that's the ideal. That is what we should get to. 
you're just so not willing to two things with that, I guess two things um first of all if, if you want to explain how you get to a post scarcity world with anarcho communism totally give you that platform number one number two the term you're looking for is anarcho syndicalist basically <laughs> like if you're if you're a dim sock for strategic reasons to bring about anarcho communism you're basically an ansen you should probably read more Anson buddy, literature. Buddy, I don't give a fuck about optics much at all. So long as people are convinced. Obviously, that's a form of optics, but there are uh, convinced. I'm just helping you out. Read some more Anson literature. Please back. I don't give a fuck. What? I'm not talking about any of that. I'm just I'm just saying like when you're saying like, well, I'm a dim sock and you're basically talking about strategically, right? But like you have leaning towards Ancom. Like I'm just I'm, I'm this isn't even a debate portion. I'm just like, dude, check out Anson literature. That's Probably closer to what you are. Uh, sure. Okay. Um. So the reason I believe capitalism to be coercive and not the ideal system is like what? Okay. Two hundred thousand years ago, we were running around in the fucking jungle, beating ourselves over the head with I don't know fucking clubs or sticks or like rocks attached. Presumably, to I got some questions with Gobekli Tepe. All right, I don't know, man. I'm fucking. I think we might have been doing some wild shit back in the day. But go ahead. Sure, whatever. And then, very recently, we landed on the fucking moon. I think that's a very you know good thing. I feel like humanity's truly evolving. What we need to do now in order to maximize positive freedom, which you obviously don't believe in, is to abolish subsistence. And I think if we use coercion to get there, that's justified because we do away with labor and do away with what we, do away with what we don't want to do. Well, you can't we justify you can't do want, we, you can't justify aggression against people, persons, or property. Like it's an unjustifiable position. Number one, um, oh, you absolutely can. Okay, so no, you, you can't. Do you, it's would impossible. You spend a cent to save the world. Let's say everybody is going to die no. unless you spend a cent. Spend? Yeah, of course I'd spend it because the world has more value to me than a penny. How bad is inflation? Inflation's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, like, like how much is a penny worth at this point? You know what I mean? Like, it's meaningless. Oh, like, it's fucking. Yeah. It's a joke. But I'm just saying, like, obviously the world is worth more to me than a penny. The penny is actually worthless if the world goes away. This is a silly thing. Now, are you asking would I steal a penny to yeah. save the world? Is that what you want to want to know? Yeah. Okay. Positive freedom and a post scarcity world are more valuable to me than you know a scarcity world in you which you keep talking about a post scarcity a manifestation world manifestation of squid game you know you keep talking about a post scarcity world as if that's an inevitability and i i you know i find this okay. kind of hilarious um so but find the but idea either, that you either, don't think labor is coercion hilarious yes well you think literally everything is coercion and that voluntary voluntary things don't exist so therefore you believe that freedom doesn't exist and you claim to want to maximize positive freedom which is a self which is a, like there's so many layers of contradictions that i've exposed throughout this that you're just being silly at this point and we haven't even gotten into why it's impossible to like i don't think you're smart enough to go through argumentation ethics to be honest so like I like I'm not, I haven't really broached it, but it's not it's not like I can now if you want if you want to have your mind blown, but like you're not capable of justifying aggression towards other individuals against their persons or property. But even if you were in some weird way, right? Your definitions require that voluntary interactions can't exist. Therefore, everything is justified. You're literally making Ivan Karamazov's argument when the Persian soldiers were stabbing a baby with a with a bayonet saying, if God isn't real, then everything is permitted. Like you're, you're basically you're you're, you're no, no, Fedor Dostoevsky's uh, that, easily, worst fucking human vulnerable. that could ever be. It's easily debunkable because religion epistemically relies on circularity. Now back to an actually relevant topic. So that's not what I said. Like you just you just fucking tried to throw out some big I'm words that don't address what I said. That's hilarious. Post scarcity world is less coercive. Okay, but what again, you have you you have to you're engaged. Okay, like okay, in a world where Merlin and magic exists, right? Communism works better. 
Maybe I've never met Merlin and I don't know what this magic is you speak of. So you either need to justify the inevitability of post scarcity and why we should be moving in that direction because of its inevitability, or you need to stop engaging with fucking fantasy novels. We're having a debate about whether or not capitalism is coercive. We're not having a bait about debate about whether or not Lord of the Rings or Star Wars is better in terms of their magic system because it's more accurate. Like, like either fucking justify the post scarcity world or uh, stop talking okay, about okay. it. Okay. Here's my, you know, big contention with this whole, you know, positive freedom doesn't exist narrative. Oh, so, would you be taxed a penny to save the world? Because, okay, let, let's say we still live in this neoliberal society. It's that one cent. That There's you no such own. thing as taxing a penny voluntarily to save the world. That's just spending a penny to save the world. There's no oh, substantive no, no, difference. No. If you voluntarily, you if you get a voluntary choice, then it's... Uh, okay. It's just spending. Well, let's say you can hide it. Let's say you can hide that one Abe Lincoln that you found under your fucking couch cushion. Do you give that to the IRS to save the world? If, if I knew unequivocally that it would actually save the world to give the IRS one penny, then I would choose to spend the penny because I value the world more than a penny, especially since once the world is gone, the penny is meaningless anyways. Hey, yeah. So you think it's about really higher ordered utility. values and what I voluntarily choose to do, not about theft yeah, or yeah, coercion. Yeah, you just made the concession right here. So, OK. No, I you didn't. Think, yeah, you, you think voluntary spending taxation in this specific instance. But it's not taxation. It serves a net utility. This is no, this is you literally changing the words of definitions again and then trying to use that as a dunk Would when you all you're doing is lying. World? Would you steal a penny to save the world? Would I steal a penny to save the world? I've had this conversation multiple times. It's a much better question than the original two that you gave because the original two are silly. The answer sure. is probably if I was, if I'm honest, I probably would steal a penny to save the world, but I recognize that that is an unjustifiable position that I'm attempting to work through. <laughs> uh, okay. So I, I believe there are instances coercion. I'm a utilitarian. If you didn't fucking know. So obviously I believe that there are instances of coercion that are justified to serve a greater net utility to humanity. You probably think that, do you not? That it what? Could you could you say it again? Let me get the wording specific. Okay. I think there are instances, justified instances of coercion that you know serve a net utility to humanity. For instance, stealing a penny to save the world you know yeah but it's not justifiable you may like it you may do it but it's not a okay. justifiable position Wait. it's impossible uh, okay. to justify this is the world we're talking about come on no no it's just it's I just mean, literally impossible for you to justify okay let's say you're like you can't do so. it he's just liquidated some stock turned that into cash and now you know the world needs saving but he's not willing to spend would you steal that one abe lincoln save the world what are you, you talking about? Like, like, justified. no, it, it's, it literally can't be. It's not a matter he, of think. It's just objectively false. You cannot justify it. He can, oh like, I don't God. get a choice. I don't get a choice to, to change the, the rules of logic. You don't get a choice to save the rules of logic. It's not logically justifiable. Therefore, it cannot be a moral claim that is true. It's just impossible to justify. You can say that that's what you want to do. You can utter the words, this is justifiable, but you're engaging in a performative contradiction. So therefore, it's impossible to justify. Uh, it is very possible to justify, and that's the fact that you're saving the fucking world by just. All right, let me explain it to you. Asshole, let, let me. Okay? I, I didn't want to get into argumentation ethics because, like, I just don't think you'll get it. But like, I'll explain it for the audience's sake and for your audience's sake, um, right? So that they can hear. I have much of an audience, me. But okay. yeah, no, I mean, I, well, I mean, I see you typing and laughing to other people. I assumed you were streaming, but if you're not, I don't. Fair enough. I have my audience too, and, and I'm sure some people are here to see you at, at some degree, right? So, do you believe, yes or no, um, that we don't have to investigate logical claims that are that that are contradictory? Law of non-contradiction and logic. Are you asking me if I think we should investigate them? No, like whether or not it is necessary to 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 investigate the claims on their on their merits as opposed to the logic if the logic is contradictory. I don't think the logic should be contradictory. 
Right. So like if I say Timmy is six years old and 12 years old, we don't need to go investigate how old Timmy is. We know that the statement is false and it can't be true because a human being can't simultaneously and be six and 12. And how actually old he is. Yes. I mean, if you want to, to determine the truth, that's fine. But we can say that that's a false statement because it's a contradictory statement. This, this is utilitarianism versus objectivism. Like, okay, so where did you deduce <laughs> that the idea that stealing a penny to save the world is... So unjust? you're going to run away from this. Be, uh, that's fine. We can run away from it. Just so if you're going to run away from right. it, well, then no, we'll just assume we'll, we'll assume that, that I'm right because you don't want to go through it. Okay, so... So you believe in the law of, of non-contradiction. We've established that. So propositional claims need to be logical in order for them to be true. This is also true of moral propositional claims because they are a subcategory of propositional claims, correct? Morally and epistemologically, where do you justify natural law? I'm literally doing it right now. Okay, go ahead. To be fair, right? <laughs> like that's what I'm doing, right? So. You believe, right, in the law of non-contradiction, this also must be true of moral propositional claims to say that something is justified or that something is good or that something is bad. Because it's a propositional claim. Yeah, you have claim. to morally justify actions pretty much all the time. Right. So when you're engaged in argumentation with me, what you are doing, right, is in order to, to but you are establishing the norm of non-aggression and self-ownership over yourself because you are choosing to use scarce resources, which is your mind and your body, as a means of engaging in this argumentation. So if you argue against the right of an individual to untrammeled, um, you know, have their body coerced in some way, then you're engaged in a performative contradiction and the argument is unjustifiable. Because I think and Kamistan leads to less coercion net. Like, do you get that general idea? That's not what I said. <sighs> okay. If you argue I in favor of coercion, right? And non-voluntary means and the ownership of people's bodies by the community or by others, Right, you're engaged in a performative contradiction. My end goal leads to the least amount of coercion possible. You, you understand at least what my position is on that, correct? Mm -mm. No, so what you're doing is you're using utilitarian calculus where your subjective bias is tabulating the information that you so choose. And then you're saying, see, I'm right based off of the things that I choose to look at, but you don't have perfect knowledge. No. You don't but, actually but that, know that, that, that. you believe that that is the case. But that, no, uh, I know it's the case because that utilitarian calculus is objective. You're God? You're an omnipotent, no, um, you're an omniscient being? You have perfect we're knowledge humans, of the world. Humans, but we deduce what is moral based on the harm it causes. So, for example, stealing a penny in order to save the world, like, I, I think that's a fundamentally good thing, but you think utilitarian calculus is bad in that instance because no matter what bezos is entitled to that fucking multi-billion dollar fortune he has well the thing is is that yes, you can't correct. you can't know that you're actually stealing a penny to save the world it's impossible to know that oh my god uh, okay you have good empirical evidence reifying the position that if we do steal this penny it virtually most likely will save the world well, you don't know that doubt. There's no, nothing can be beyond a reasonable doubt when trying to determine what the actions will cause in the future. But we don't know everything about the brain, but we still morally justify things. Mm hmm Obviously- You can morally justify claims that don't, that don't um, we, engage in aggression okay. upon uh, other people I mean, or their what, property. No, what I mean to say is that like, humans aren't a binary there's always going to be a semblance of doubt in something in terms exactly of its epistemology yeah so okay right but logically We're we can now. prove that one that Coercing argues now. against those things right is a performative contradiction and is an impossibility proof against the claims that they make themselves so we can dismiss what that is not true so when you advocate aggression towards people or you advocate the theft or the destruction of private property then i know objectively that that is false Wait, how? No. Okay. Good. Seven billion people dying. If one guy doesn't, you know, and a penny of the labor that has been generated 
uh, in to his. Let's, all right, you really, you really love, you really love this because it it it, it sings the um, the ethos, or sorry, the pathos, right? You're loving this pathos argument right now, which is the emotional idea that someone would be so Saving cold the world and callous. The net benefit. Right, right. That someone would be so cold and callous, right? But we can easily reframe this in a very much less charitable way, right? Like the classic trolley cart problem is is even less charitable than what you're doing. Or if you if you take this logic out further, right, we could use the hospital bed example, right? A person comes in that's perfectly healthy, and then there are five people that need organs. This person is a perfect match for all five of those people. Are you willing to kill that one person in order to save the other five lives? Will you murder one person? Person and then, but know for a fact or know beyond reasonable doubt, etc., that you are um, that you're that you're going to save five lives. So the marginal utility, right? The, or sorry, the, the the net utility is that five people live one way and one person dies or one person dies and or sorry or five people die and one person lives so we can we can do this in a much less charitable way like the penny example is designed to evoke a response right that this person is a monster and what i'm saying is is that you don't get to justify theft and murder or rape or any of these other forms of aggression against people at all. And I doubt that your example actually matches reality of the world. The and the real answer that. is, the real answer is, I'll finish. The real answer is you should approach this problem most likely like a virtue emphasis. And what you should do is you should do everything to fight whatever fucking monster or evil is about to kill 7 billion people and not engage in some form of theft. Or if you're a fucking criminal and you do it, you must pay restitution and recompensation Finding afterwards. How, finding out how to combat what's about to kill 7 billion people is obviously going to involve a bit of theft. Okay, so like, how do we know if any action is ethical if we don't 100% know it in the first place? Like, obviously, epistemologically, there's ambiguity. So I don't think as far as I as far as far as I as far as I can tell, I'm not sure that you can just that you can know that a decision is ethically justifiable. What I think you can do right is the law of non contradiction. Right. And what you can do is you can you can you can determine that some things are unjustifiable. Right. And thus you can determine that the opposite of said thing is always justifiable, but there's a range of choices within opposites often. Right. So for example, um, you know, if I, if I can, well, like if I can prove, for example, that like, um, murder is wrong, for example, right. If we can prove that murder is wrong. We can contradict that murder is wrong. That doesn't, what that means is not murdering is justifiable, but there's a lot of things one can do that, are, that okay, are also just, not murdering okay just explain the nuance and the circumstances then in a lot of instances i'd be down with murder but i mean okay, so, when we're well, talking no, no, no. murder no i can use your own logic right your own positions which i believe are unjustifiable right so do you believe like assuming murder not killing murder is wrong everything that is not murdering is then like justified in some regard right unless there's other some other form of 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 contradiction right there's a range of things engaging in the labor market would be one of those things that is not murdering and you would say that that is wrong right so what i mean to say is that Still like an we can object that does not make the choice free Right, but you say that about quite literally everything. So it's a meaningless thing. You're saying that about the nature of reality. And then what you're doing I'm is you're attempting to judge morality, thing. right? But you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to escape the nature of reality by then creating a post-scarcity fantasy world and putting your moral framework in the post-scarcity fantasy world as a means of being able to attempt to justify the situation. Okay, but you're basing your morality in a pre-scarcity, you know, fantasy world in which literally everything is determined by contract, uh, agreement, whatever. And I just think no, I'm not. System can exist. My system here. is literally in, exists in a system of scarcity. What are you talking about? Like that's just you attempting to meme uh, and failing. Scarcity, yeah, yeah. S -s scarcity, scarcity. Sure. If you can't walk yeah. and chew bubble gum at the same time, don't don't try. Don't try and like mimic my hand movements and say dumb shit. Like, just try and make a good argument. If you can't meme. Okay, it's okay. In terms Not of all of us are good at it. Shit. You said I was a slaver, but you're worse than Hitler because you wouldn't steal a penny to save the world. I mean, come on, man. Like, obviously, 
I so, believe some instances of coercion are justified, and you clearly do because, like, um, we literally got to the "you're worse than Hitler." I love it. Um, so I'm I worse than Hitler bro. because I won't steal. And I said that what you should do is attempt to fight yes. whatever evil is trying to kill the world, as opposed to give in to evil. So here's the here's yeah, the no, funny no, no, little no, no, thing. No, well, no, no, we, no, no. We Let me defeat this that. analogy for you again. Let me defeat this analogy for you again, because apparently in order to get shit, you need to have shit defeated like six ways from Sunday, and then you eventually give up and move forward. So let me defeat this a second way. Let's look at this from a from a from a game theory perspective. See, when you isolate something and you say steal, right? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Right. When you isolate something as steal a penny to save the world, right, in, in that moment, what you're doing is you're creating a snapshot decision and you're saying it's justified to engage in theft instead of fighting evil. See, the problem with that is, is what happens when your world is set upon the rules of the idea that it is justifiable to steal for the benefit of for a larger presumed benefit. As you run that game over and over and over again, what you get is a world where people where it's constantly justifiable to steal for the subjective analysis of individuals to presumably better others. What you get is theft over and over and over again and you get unjustifiable positions over and over and over again and you live in not the utopia of post-scarcity but the dystopia so there's another way your analogy is defeated that you tried to use to circumnavigate argumentation no, no, ethics you're, you're extrapolating way too much into a simple hypothetical that's like i said no i'm literally running I'm, like medical bed no, hypothetical I'm, okay well <laughs> uh, we can actively develop stem cell research that would make us grow synthetic organs that they can use but i just need to contend with the hypothetical and that's like completely i'm maintaining the principal right, elements and then reiterating those in society you're just lying right now well, you're not no you're not because you're no, saying you, well, you if you're not lying then you're just you're not smart enough to get what what like game like reiterating it over and over again does right like it's just another means by which to test the logic another means by which to test the no, okay. When because you say something is morally me. justifiable, right? That must be a universal. Morally moral moral propositional claims must be universal. And say so if they're if if they're I'm sorry, you you must be able to universalize them. So if you universalize your moral propositional claim that it is morally justified in or, to do something, right? In order to do something in order to save people from your subjective analysis, and I test that Right. Then what you're saying is one of two things that either this is a false moral. This is a false moral claim or you're saying that this moral claim, for whatever reason, That's only what exists doing. in this specific set of circumstances. And now I need to define what are the parameters of those circumstances that are different from the moral claim itself. OK, so what I was trying to say that you're introducing an entirely new circumstance, which was present in the original hypothetical. So again, that's like saying, okay, well, we need to develop synthetic organs. So the people actually get the organs they need and the original corpse isn't harmed, but okay, I still have to contend which what's strictly in the hypothetical. How do you justify not stealing so the world dies? Like, okay. Uh, I would definitely steal that penny because Bezos can clearly afford to pay for that, okay? I already told you that in such an extreme position that doesn't match reality that it's very possible that I would do it. Either does right? the organ hypothetical. Right, but the, the situation, right? But the situation is as such that what one should morally do is, is not steal. That you should attempt to fight the system or you should do whatever it is the hell you want. I mean, fuck it, the world's fucking ending unless you steal this penny. Like, maybe the fucking world's gone. I don't know. Uh, that's why we can morally justify it from a utilitarian standpoint. Somehow okay. can't because okay. apparently objectivity right, but, or whatever. Okay, so again, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna go through this again, right? But I'm going to do it in an example so that you can maybe, maybe your brain can understand it. Universalize this. The claim is... Right. The claim is, is that it is OK to steal something that somebody owns. Right. In order to save other people's lives, that this is a moral good, that you have a moral imperative to do. Correct. Yes. Presuming I'm going to even give you a caveat, presuming 
that the theft does not kill other people, right? That like that there's a net gain in life, right? That you can that you can't steal food out of a baby's mouth and like kill the baby to like save somebody else, like right there, right? Presuming that there's a net benefit. So if we universalize this, what you're saying is, is that America needs to pay a 90% tax rate so that we can make sure that African children don't starve and that we're allowed to take everything from America and give it to Africa so long as that actually saves the starving children. And um, tomorrow we just need a 90% tax rate effective. I would take any caliber of that bullet fired any day of the week, yes. Like, obviously, this is a clear and total bullet bite. But, you know, I think humanity transcends nationality, so of course I would, you know, tax the shit out of Bezos for some starving African children. Of course, it's the necessarily morally thing, moral thing to do. Sorry, I'm bad with words. Right, um, so already... you would, you would, you would, you know... <laughs> Like, do you realize what you're biting the bullet on, right? Like you're biting the bullet on the idea that you can steal as much as you want, so long as your subjective analysis proves uh, it to you and, and your opinion. Like you're basically saying, like, shut up, get into the gulag. Like, you, you know, how many people would you enslave? You how many people would you- is equatable to a gulag? I think taxation is theft and it's a form of slavery. I think a gulag is kidnapping and it's a form of- they're labor. what gulag is forced labor right labor is taxation forced labor. is 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 theft Assistance labor is forced labor like obviously I, right, but all, all work is forced you know. i know you you already stated that you believe that that the reason the, the moral impetus you have for denying an objective analysis of morality is that you believe that everything is aggression everything is evil and everything is coercive and then what we can since Some we do that we can do a universal we can we can do a utilitarian analysis later later uh sure, fine um i can go at 8:57 just so you know just letting you know uh, Eastern Standard Time? At EST. Yeah, it's fine. I'm fine with that. It's okay. Did you want to make like a, a, a closing statement then? Because we're kind of stuck on the seal of penny, like philosophical window. Like I want to give you an opportunity to like surmise your points. Um, and if you want me to go first, I'll go first since you're like you're a guest and I've been hounding you. Uh, I'll go first if you want me to. So either way, reason... your choice. Uh, okay. So the reason I think Fabian system is inferior is because there's still a clear and present element of coercion in people's lives there. This being labor. I wanted to do with that to get to a post-scarcity world, and in a post-scarcity world, we in our human lives can focus on what we would like to do and what we would want to do rather than pre being preoccupied with what we would rather not be doing. So, uh, yeah, I, I think coercion is definitely justified in that instance. Obviously, coercion is like definitionally definitionally ambiguous, mm -hmm. but obviously it's highly justified. Obviously, I totally like rip apart Jeff Bezos' net worth to save the planet. Uh, additionally, I tax George Soros to, you know, give to a few more African kids. I think those are perfectly analogous. Um, so, yeah, I generally think well, not generally, but almost universally. ANCOM will generate a greater utility by not forcing us to work. I, I just want to know how uh, FL epistemologically justifies like these rigid standards of not stealing. Okay, I guess I'm so, more nuanced than him. Like he really likes to keep things stringent. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, nuance is uh, the devil's in the details with that nuance, isn't it? Uh, the devil is certainly in the details when commies yeah. talk about nuance. But anyways, um, yeah, I think that um, you know the idea that um, that positive rights exist and and that they are for whatever reason more important than negative rights is logical is is a is a contradiction in terms because positive rights require that you violate people's negative rights, but respecting negative rights does not require that you violate any positive rights. Um, unless of course, by saying that it violates those positive rights, you must then violate the other right. So with positive rights, a rights violation is always present with negative rights. It is not present. 
um, unless you subscribe to a positive rights philosophy, which then creates a, a never ending cycle of rights violations that is impossible to maintain. And so logically, the only position that one can hold is that of negative rights. You do not have a right to someone else's labor. You do not have a right to someone else's work. You do not have a right to someone else's property. But when you say that people have a right to food or a right to certain um, standards of living um, and that they must be provided, that's exactly what you're doing. You're demanding other people work for you and you're enslaving them in some capacity, um, which is what my opponent said multiple times, which is that you do not have a right not to work, which is a right you do have in a capitalist system, even if it's stupid. Um, I would also say that, you know, the idea of, of getting rid of capitalism as an innovative force towards um, towards post-scarcity is the most ridiculous thing that one could ever do. Oh, did, did he dip out? Oh, uh, I'm not g gone yet. Uh, oh, you just cut off your camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, what the fuck? I would also say that um, the way that capitalism works is that it combines this idea of, of, of labor and land um, and that the capitalist is the individual that gives the monies, gives the gives the um, the the investment towards the time preference against the universal time preference, and by by virtue of the incentive structure of profit for the proper allocation of resources, this is the way that the supply and demand equation allows us to be able to create cheaper and better products and services, etc. Um, but what it, what it, what is occurring? Right in, in this other system is that there isn't that same incentive other than people's <laughs> desires in this, this place where they have to work, but they can choose to work on whatever it is they work. But don't worry, it'll be post scarcity. It's it's again, it's engaged in utopia and it's um and it's not really following economic principles. Lastly, I would say that when you when you attempt to redefine words like labor and work and time and morally justified and coercion and aggression, you begin to see that someone doesn't have an argument. When they need to constantly try and use your own terminology against you and rephrase those words to try and fit their own kind of utopic analysis, you realize that what they're really trying to do is subvert. And you know, that's the dialectic process like at its best. And um, and that's why I think that subjectivism, postmodernism, Marxism, neo-Marxism, anarcho-communism, and all of these things that are based in that consequentialist subjectivist analysis are um, are, are acts of evil um, that are designed to philosophically poison the well and um, turn everyone poor and destroy our society. You believe in natural rights, right? Are you done? Yeah, I believe in natural law. There you go. Those are closing uh, statements. That, that would have been uh, the much better debate to have because we can really get into the nitty gritty of the epistemology. Yeah, we could have talked about Bakunin and what is authority and things like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's for another time. I plan on DMing Zulu about that, but um, uh, feel free to talk to me. Hey, feel about feel that. free to debate and Zulu. Just know that I am way nicer than Zulu. Zulu is going to pin you to the fucking wall and and like demand that you not change the words of anything. I, I let you get away with a lot. Zulu's fucking Zulu goes hard. Just warning you. Right. Sure. All right. Well, uh, I feel like this has been pretty constructive. Obviously, I feel like we went in circles, but I think it was net good nonetheless. Um, Fabian, 